this is the way that I do arch reconstructions um, in both the setting of, uh, of Norwoods and an interrupted arch, uh, uh, hypoplastic arch, et cetera. So um, I don't use uh, DHCA in almost any circumstance unless there's something really unusual. I do regional low flow perfusion, uh, typically somewhere around 70, driven by the near infrared spectroscopic evaluation of perfusion, essentially. Uh, and also pressure monitoring if we happen to have a UAC or a radial art line. And usually, depending on how long and what I'm going to be doing, somewhere between 28 and 32. I control the brachycephalic vessels with the soft, I call them vessel loops. I think that's what they're called. They're soft, rubbery things that I put a POTS loop around the individual brachycephalic vessels. I think it's less traumatic than a tourniquet or a clamp. Um, I mobilize the descending aorta a lot. I usually take at least the first two sets of intercostals, and I take as many as I can get to. Um, I do a coarctectomy as though it were cancer in everybody. I take out as much, all the ductal tissue, and I'm absolutely certain about that. And then I do an interdigitating posterior anastomosis, and I'll show a diagram of in everybody. For Norwood, I use a one quarter circle patch that's rounded on the end in the way that Jim Tweddle has described, that I think most surgeons are probably familiar with. Uh, and I give cardioplegia, especially in an aortic atresia type kid, um, using a little olive tip catheter that I. Put, I open the arch and then shove it down retrograde into the ascending aorta and then snare that with a vessel loop. For a hypoplastic arch, as opposed to a Norwood you know, or interrupted aortic arch, um, where the ascending aorta is of reasonable size and doesn't need to be augmented, the patch, instead of being shaped like one quarter circle, is a kidney bean shaped patch. And there I give pleage directly into the ascending aorta, but I put the pleage cannula in the distal ascending aorta uh, where I want my kidney bean being patched to reach up to, so the last part of the patch is, is taking out the cardioplegia catheter and making an incision through that site. Um, it's been alluded to before, but and I, I think this comes down to the issue about technical aspects, so it's maybe different than what Phil said earlier with having to do with the arch. I think the material is less the problem, and I think the, 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 uh, the uh, technique is the problem. And, to completely counteract what I just said. I think the difficulties we have with many patches is that except for homographs, which are hemipulmonary arteries, they are flat. They're planar patches, and it doesn't matter whether it's a piece of uh, autologous pericardium that's treated with glutaraldehyde, whether it's core matrix, whether it's uh, this material or some other bovine pericardium. This is a shark fin patch made out of paper on my desk yesterday, and it's a planar patch. And uh, you're putting it into a three-dimensional location two dimensions into a three dimension. And so the way I deal with that is to, this is an exaggerated pleat. So I fold the patch on itself along the curved edge. And so you've got a needle pass that goes through one, uh, the adjacent needle patch passes go through the tissue once, then it goes through the tissue three times, and then goes through the tissue once. And if you do that, you put a pleat in the patch. That's a very useful technique, and it gives the patch immediately depth. And the more of those you put in, the deeper the patch is. So if you're doing a transannular patch in a, in a TET, and you want a patch that's not flat, um, you do that on both sides. If you're doing it in, on the proximal hood that you're putting in a truncus, for example, where you're going to put a hood on the proximal end of the homograft, or, the, or the, you don't need to do it with the contegra. But if you put pleats on both sides, then you create a patch that has a nice, gentle, rounded curve. And this is very helpful using a planar patch uh, in the aortic arch. And this, uh, this next photograph is just that patch now flipped on its side. So a patch that a minute ago was lying flat on the table is now sticking a centimeter up into the air. So you've got now an aortic arch patch that's got depth to it and, and three-dimensionality. And that's how I deal with the fact that, that cardiocell and, and any other planar patch is being put into a three-dimensional location. So the patient I'm going to show the movie of is a three and a half kilogram baby who was uh, diagnosed prenatally as having either a, a severe coarctation or an actual interruption with very significant uh, transverse arch hypoplasia, but a reasonable size ascending aorta, a huge ASD and moderate TR with a very large RV. Her LV was apex forming, but her RV was for some reason very, very large. When she was born, she was in distress immediately and intubated in the in the uh, delivery room, and it wasn't clear why. Um, her right lung was hypoplastic on her x-ray, and they thought she had either a diaphragmatic hernia, um, but with significant dextro position of her heart, or a right hemidiaphragmy ventration, which is what I think she actually has. I was very concerned that she was actually a, uh, a scimitar, 
um, and made them cath her and CT her, and she is not a scimitar, uh, which made me a little more happy about operating on her. Um, this is what her chest x-ray looked like in the delivery room right before she got intubated, so they got lines in her pretty quickly, but she struggled, and within an hour was on the ventilator. So the operation that I did was to basically uh, repair her arch and uh, close her ASD repair tricuspid valve. So for me, in this case, because I was going to go in the right atrium and I also didn't want to do circa rest, I cannulated her anomalous artery directly, her PDA, because I thought she was interrupted, uh, right atrial appendage to get the SVC cannulated and the IVC. Repaired her arch with a standard coarctectomy, which I'm not going to torture you with, um, and then did a posterior uh, interdigitating anastomosis. Um, I hope most people in the room have seen this diagram or one like it, but except that this is from a Norwood description, that's what the interdigitation looks like. So you've got the freed up distal aortic uh, segment right here with a cutback incision on that side of the aorta, and then the rounded edge of the isthmus is shoved down into that on anastomosis. So that gives you a posterior wall that is native tissue to tissue. And then whether it's a Norwood or, or an interrupted arch or an or a, a arch hypoplasia, when the patch is prepared, I make a, an opposite side cut back over here, uh, and a little bit, not exactly 180 degrees different, maybe more like 120 degrees over here, but a significant cut back. Uh, and then I put the toe or the tongue of the, uh, the rounded edge of the patch, whichever, whether it's a, quarter, a kidney bean or a uh, one quarter circle shark fin, uh, down into that and then bring the patch up. And as I come around the corner here, and I can't show you this because my head bob was just distressing to me to watch, um, I put little pleats in, and that gives this patch depth and allows you to bring it around the corner in a way that gives you a very satisfactory looking contour. So this is picked up after I've done the interdigitation, and you hopefully at some point will be able to see down in where my fingers are. And this is just me making the cutback, right back, cut, cutting the suture, and I'm going to make a cutback down into that anterior wall there. I apologize for my my uh, wobbling head here. This is me taking a string and seeing what the kidney bean patch would look like. And you can see I've already cut the ASD patch out of there. Um, and so that's what I think I mean by a kidney bean patch. That's cardiacel. That's cardiacel. And I'll just shove this down there in there. To, it's one of those things where they say measure twice and cut once. I measure three or four times and cut four or five times. Um, this is the cut back into the descending aorta. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, also, it tells me which side is the smooth side and which side is the rough side. But for VSD patches, I definitely use it to tell the blood to go forward and not backwards to the tricuspid valve. Um, and that I won't, this is the part you really can't see after I get started here. But you can see the shiny side is, is up. Um, 7 0. If it's a small baby, 8 0. But for, for, ne for most neonates, certainly 3.5 kilogram, I need 7 0. Um, and then once I get all done with that in this kid, because I hadn't done the inside of the heart stuff yet either, I pressurize the patch, that's the clamp coming up, the descending aorta and the vessel loop being pulled off the uh, left carotid. And you can't see it very well, I really apologize for that, but the patch, which is moving all over the place, is now pressurized and I use that to look at the suture line and then I'm going to switch the clamps around and put the clamp on the distal ascending aorta, take the one off the proximal ascending aorta and then go ahead and do the administrated ASD patch and, and tricuspid commissuroplasty. In the operating room, this kid who had WPW and, and pre-excitation on all of her preoperative chest x-rays had just malignant SVT. Every time I touched her heart post, pre and post, she went into a rapid, poorly tolerated uh, rhythm. So I left her chest open with uh, bypass tourniquets in, uh, thinking that she might uh, have a precipitous decline in the first couple of days. She did not, so we closed her chest a couple of days later. Um, she continued to have arrhythmias and is on two IV drugs now. And as long as she's on the drugs and we're A pacing her, she's fine. When we turn the pacer down, she starts going into SVT again. And I think we're probably going to have to see if the EP guy's going to blade something. She's extubated, tolerating feeds, has no arch gradient, obviously very early on, um, and very mild TR with uh, normal PA pressures. So that's, that's how I do an arch.